everyone. This is Rosanna, um, back again for floss tube number five. It's Monday, April 1st, and I have a big finish that I wanted to share. Um, so I thought I'd just hop on. I don't think this video is going to be all that long, but I did have my large finish. I have a small FFO. I have and two new starts, and I have uh, big plans. <laughs> big plans now that I've finished one of these bigger projects. So I will just jump right into it. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you probably know what I'm going to show. <laughs> uh, this is the Santa's A Fable and Fantasy. And I can't believe it, but it is finally complete. This project I started, I think it was about October 10th. So gosh, it's <laughs> it's been a while. Um, this was a much more involved project that I had originally expected. Um, that's probably just because I had never worked from um, one of these vintage magazines before. So it was a new experience. The pattern was a lot more detailed than any of the other patterns I had done previously. Um, so I am absolutely thrilled <laughs> that this is finally done. And here you can take a little bit of a closer look at it. Uh, as you can see, it has just a ton of details and embellishments. Um, every single Santa has his own little accessories. Um, like Santa Claus in the middle here has a wreath and a jump rope and a doll up here. Um, and the wizard Santa has like a wand. And I, I changed this part to a little sequin up here. I think it called for a star or something, but I didn't have that. And, and yeah, it's just, I just want to like anyone who, um, is considering doing a project like this from one of the vintage magazines. Uh, one thing that I learned <laughs> was just that you have to be really careful about all those tiny details cause it's easy to miss them. Um, the pattern, I guess it's just really busy and your eye will overlook, um, a lot of these things that are going on. So, and that also goes for the backstitching. Um, this is the most intense backstitching I've ever done on a project, um, by far. And... I would just, I, I kept noticing, I would like, be like, oh great, I'm done with, with this Santa. I like fully backstitched it and I can move on. And then like a couple days later, I would look, look at it and I would be like, wait a minute, <laughs> I missed like a whole section of backstitching and I didn't even realize it. Um, and I actually, I did take maybe just like five, 10 minutes at the very end to just examine the piece and just make sure I hadn't um, overlooked any backstitching areas, um, or any areas with, uh, well, I, I used beads instead of French knots. So there was a bit of beading that I had to worry about, um, throughout the piece. And I just made sure I didn't miss any of those. Um, <laughs> so that is just a little bit of advice, I guess, if you decide to do a pattern of this nature is just to be really careful of the backstitching and all the embellishments because it's kind of easy to skip them. Even now I'm a little bit worried that like <laughs> I'll put this in a frame and then two months later I'll be like, oh no, oh no, I, <laughs> I missed something. I hope that doesn't happen. But it was so funny because yesterday 
uh, I was so close to finishing this and I, I, I literally just sat for four hours straight, I think. I mean, I had the TV on in the background, but I just sat there and I was just like, getting through the back stitching of this last Santa over here. And then there were a couple things I hadn't done, like I hadn't added the jump rope, um, and maybe one or two other things. So I, I was working on it like so intensely for about four hours and I, I hit a wall and I said to myself, even if I were to push through and finish it, um, at that moment, I would probably miss something anyway. So I was like, I'm just gonna sleep on it, um, finish it tomorrow, take some time to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> I'm glad I did because <laughs> this was really, really early this morning. Um, I tend to, a lot of days I tend to wake up a lot earlier than I would like. Um, <laughs> So I was up at like 5.30 and I couldn't fall back asleep. So I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna get it out and work on it. So I was there in the early morning hours putting the finishing touches on the Santas of Fable and Fantasy. And then I was like, oh, it's like I had this, this moment like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm finally done. <laughs> but but I, I had this moment of like, you, Rosanna, you better go back to the magazine and go through the list of the embellishments. And I can show you, this is like part of the list. This is like straight stitching, um, French knots, and a couple other things down here. There's even more on the other page that specifies all the back stitching. And this morning, like whatever it was, like 6.30 after I thought I was done, I said to myself, go back and just go through that list and make sure you didn't miss anything. And I'm so glad that I did because I was going through the list and I was like, yep, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. And then I realized I had forgotten all of the stars. I hadn't added any of these stars. I had the moons. <laughs> I didn't have the stars. I just like, I forgot that they were there or whatever. Maybe, maybe I'd never even noticed them in the first place. But I saw them there on the list, in the list of French knots. And I was like, no. But I was not going to be deterred. Um, I was just like, I'm getting this thing done, like right now. So I got out some beads, um, just like, little white beads and I went ahead and just did them and it didn't take me that long it was maybe like a half hour <laughs> early this morning and then it was finally done <laughs> so yes for the French knots and that that includes like the eyes um there were some buttons in his suit there were some beads or supposed to be French knots over in the greenery over here and his wreath up here uh, in the flag, just various, all these French knots. And I just pulled all of these beads from my stash and used those instead because I didn't want to be fumbling around with French knots. I'm not very good at those. I had to do a couple for one of my big projects last year and I found them I think like once you get the hang of it, it's probably fine, but I have found them a little bit frustrating back then and I just didn't want to be fooling around with like this many French knots because that, that would just be so many. So I just switched them with beads and I think that's about it. Um, yeah, I was watching uh, Hello from Liz Matthews her YouTube channel. She had a video, maybe two or three videos ago. She was talking about, she's working on one of these Christmas stockings that I think was probably originally in Cross Stitch and Country Crafts because there's just a lot of Christmas stockings in this magazine back in the 80s. And she's working on one of those, um, 
and sh she was talking about the backstitching, and sh she referred to it as magic backstitching, um, which I think is just the perfect way to put it, because as intense as it was, and as long as it took me, it just made this piece come to life. Um, it looks incredible with all of that backstitching finished. So now that I have this experience, I know exactly what Liz from Hello from Liz Matthew was talking about. Like the mag the magic backstitching on these older patterns. And it really is. Um, and I am just ecstatic about this. I hope that by the time I do my next video, um, I'll have it actually framed. Um, I do have a frame for it. And I gotta get a piece of glass and I just gotta fool around for a couple of days, like stretching this and getting it into the frame. But <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say. I think they are so cute. And all right. So that was that. Um, and after that, I do think I will be taking a break from the vintage patterns. I don't, I'm not gonna rush over to my stack of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine and like start another one because that, that particular style, I, I like it, but I don't want to dive right into another one immediately. I wanna focus on some other things. Um, okay. So the next thing I was gonna show uh, was my FFO. <laughs> so, which stands for fully finished object, just means, you know, either you framed it or you made it into an ornament or whatever the thing is, fully finished object. And I think you know what it is. <laughs> I featured it in my last video when it was not a fully finished object yet. But here it is. So Mistletoe Loitering Society by Lindy Stitches is now framed. And I'm holding it right now, but I do already have a spot for it on the wall, which you can see in a photo I'll put up here. Um, yeah, this frame, <laughs> I am so happy I found this frame because it's a perfect size. I found it at Goodwill. This frame, it actually had another cross stitch in it. Um, so this glass is actually the non-glare glass, which is nice. And the color was perfect, the size was perfect. So I am really happy about this. I think it turned out uh, exceptionally well. Um, and I was a little worried about finding a frame the right size for this because it seemed a little... I was afraid I was going to have to put it in a bigger frame, which I didn't want to do because I didn't want it taking like extra space on the wall if it didn't need to. So this was awesome. And I framed it myself. You can see. <laughs> I should probably actually tape down the edges here just so it doesn't start to fray. But yeah. So the big question is, will I ever finish something that is not Christmas themed? And I will. <laughs> I do have a lot of projects that aren't Christmas. It's just, it happened, it so happened that I was really driven to finish the Santas of Fable and Fantasy. Like, um, I don't know why. I just didn't want to put it away. I didn't want it to linger for like a, another year. I wanted to really just get it done. Okay, so now I will show some brief prog uh, progress updates. I'm gonna take a little sip for my seltzer. Cause I, did, I, I didn't have a ton of progress on my whips because I was just, I had tunnel vision and I was concentrating on the Santas, but I did make progress on a few. So let me just go through those pretty fast. So here's 
Shelter from the Storm by Scattered Seed Samplers. You know, I kind of, I wanted to kind of get this finished for Easter, but it didn't end up happening. Um, but uh, I did take my needle miner off because it's kind of in the way. But I did make some progress. I finished um, the rabbits. Well, not quite finished because I have to fill in a little bit, but they're mostly done. I just got to do the rest of the mushroom. There's some grass and flowers. I think that, um, I think that I can knock this one out pretty soon. And that is one of my plans because this is a smaller piece. And instead of, yeah, instead of letting it linger, I would just kind of like to get it finished. So I think I will be concentrating on this and one other one that I have that's close to being done for the next couple of weeks. Um, now that the Santas are done and I don't have to worry about that. But yeah, this one's looking really nice. I love the colors, which I, well, I picked them for my stash. So that was that one. Um, I just realized I didn't tell you what fabric this was in case you're curious. It's a 28 count uh, Lugana in the color New Khaki. And it was just a really nice neutral for this particular piece. I don't regret it. Um, and I think the colors stand out just like beautifully on it. Okay, so this next progress update, I actually got really far with it. Um, so I'm excited to maybe have this one done in the not too distant future. But it's the Santa's House from the Fabulous House series. This was my New Year's Day start. So I've been working on this for a couple of months. Um, well, I guess at this point it's three months. <laughs> crazy to think about. But here it is. I can't believe I finished this house while I was working on the Santa's of Fable and Fantasy, but somehow I did it. And there was a few, there was a few nights where I was just like, I can't, I can't get this thing out. I can't concentrate on it. I need to take a break from the backstitching. So that's when I would switch to doing this. And that's why I just like, wow, just bulldozed right through this house. Um, and it's done. Uh, the house is done. The border obviously is not done. There's a sled that's gonna go over here. Some more of these like star things. I don't think it's gonna take me, well, famous last words, I always say that. I'm always like, oh, it's not gonna take me that long. And then it's like, well, two months later and it's still not done. <laughs> but I am hopeful that I can finish this by the end of April, fingers crossed. Um, and here's a closer look. So I have been loving this fabric for this piece. This is a 32 count even weave called Splendid Blue. And it, I bought it through Stitchery Express. Um, I think it is a fabric flare brand even weave. And I got the opalescent version so it sparkles. Um, the nice thing about this opalescent is that it's not like really, really in your face. It is much more subtle than some of the other opalescents I have in my stash. Um, it just gives like the perfect amount of shimmer um, and it's not, it doesn't really interfere with the stitching part. Um, I just really like the feel of this fabric, the tension of it. Uh, it's been very easy to work with for me and the color is just incredible. So yeah, I anticipate I will probably do other projects on this as well, but this is looking amazing. I did change some of the reds. 
you can see that the red here and here and here is a little bit darker than what's going on here. Um, and that's because I had a bunch of Weeks Dye Works Louisiana hot sauce left over from Mistletoe Loitering Society. So I decided to use that just to give it some more like color saturation and I think it looks really nice and I'm happy with it. I don't regret that choice and I think it the effect that I was going for like it worked. Um, okay so I guess that's all I have to say about that. I think the deer turned out like so cute. I love them. I love those little deer. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> okay, so that was Santa's house. Um, all right, State Fair. This is from the World of Cross Stitching magazine. And I've said this in my other videos, but I'll say it again, uh, August 2023 issue. Here's what it looks like when it's done. And the last time I really didn't have much. I had like one little horse in the gate. <laughs> so really, um, really minimal, but I did, I did make some progress. And this took a while these little island things with the grass or the <clears throat> whatever that's supposed to be, like sand or sawdust or whatever, um, <laughs> they're quite large and there's a bunch of them. Uh, like if you were to look at the magazine, there's like, I don't know, a lot of grass and stuff. So those elements are going to take me quite a while to get through but I'm really enjoying this piece uh, I'm I don't really have any complaints about it there are quite a bit of fractional stitches but as long as you're comfortable with those um, this has been going really well so this is 32 count blue whisper Belfast linen which I got through one, two, three stitch. All right, so the horses are looking good. This is the one, you can see it's in my hoop with the little attachment here. This is one of the ones I am using two-handed stitching with a, a stand, which has been going pretty well. And then I just have one very small progress update which is this was my leap year start Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow and so I'm starting with this block up here and it's a little faint with the fabric but you can see there's some ghosts So I did not, I did not get far with everything else I had going on, but I did finish one of the ghosts. <laughs> oh, look how scary he is. <laughs> so cute. Um, this is 40 count affogato linen by... F Ooh. I want to say fiber on a whim, I think. And so far, I think it's going okay. Um, 40 count. Yeah, it's going to be, I have to be in the right, like, mindset for 40 count. And this is a really, really big project. So <laughs> I think I can do it. I just, it's, it's going to take effort, obviously. But I'm... Excited to see what it ends up looking like four years from now, if I'm able to finish it by then. 
And yeah, the designer of this is Carriage House Samplings. All right, so those were my whips that I actually made some progress on. The rest of them have been on the back burner, which is okay. Uh, it's okay with me, so. <laughs> um, I, I do like the variety and being able to switch things out from one night to the next. Um, so I'm gonna stick with that for the time being. All right. Now I did have two new starts. One of them is another another uh, design by Lindy Stitches. And I'm a big fan of Lindy Stitches because she also did the Mistletoe Loitering Society. And she has like a lot of birds in her patterns and I, I love birds. So I am doing Grave Fellows. Uh, this is one of the ones that is included in Lindy Stitch's spooky book. Um, so this is not a very big pattern. I think as long as I, you know, actually put some time into it, it shouldn't take me too long to get it done. But it has a really cute vulture here in the middle and then a couple of ravens. So I just think it's adorable. And I'll show you what I've got on it so far. Yep, so I finished the lettering and just the top of the vulture. I will take a minute to just talk about this fabric. So it's, I, I don't really know like the count of it. This is fabric that I dyed myself. Um, and what I did was, I have been discovering that linen napkins used to be like a big thing. Um, I think, you know, households would have linen napkins for like their fancier tableware, which also means that they really weren't used <laughs> much. Because um, I think people would be like, oh, it's too fancy and put it in a drawer with the fancy china or whatever because I have come across quite a few linen napkins um, just in my thrifting excursions and at this point yeah I have accumulated quite a few in different colors I found some really nice pink ones a few weeks ago I haven't played around with those yet um, <laughs> but these ones were just plain white and so I played around with dyeing one of them and I just used the writ dye and I used the simple like how to dye at home tutorial which I can link below again I think I linked it in my last video but I dyed this with a combination of um, I think it was like the forest green and the royal blue and yeah it's just it's cool I think it looks good I wasn't sure if the stitching was gonna work um, the grid on these napkins is actually not crazy. It's not like super, super, super tiny. Um, so it, it's working. And yeah, it's just really neat. A neat little thing to play around with, especially if you find these vintage linen napkins at a thrift store. You know, you can find like five for a dollar or whatever. <laughs> They're so cheap. Um... So for smaller projects, you know, it's just kind of, kind of a cool thing to have in your stash. But anyway, that was the Grave Fellows. Uh, all right, so the last thing, well, I was going to talk about one other new start but I think I might have forgotten to bring it out here I might have to just pause for a second sorry 
Okay, I'm back. Sorry for the pause. Um, my other new start, and I, I thought it was a little like crazy to do this, and I, up until this happened, I always said I wasn't gonna do full coverage yet. Like I didn't think I was ready for it yet. Um, but Heaven and Earth Designs was having like a 50% off sale, which means that their mini patterns were only $6. So I just, I was too tempted and I just decided I was going to buy one. Um, luckily I have like a ton of DMC just in my stash. Um, so it wasn't a huge expense for me to collect the flosses to just get this piece started. Um, so it is a Heaven and Earth Designs pattern and they do, they only do full coverage um, and they have certain artists that they work with uh, to create these patterns. So gosh, they have like so many beautiful pieces. Um, I picked a mini because they have the regular ones which are a lot more detailed and then they have the minis which in some cases I guess well the amount of detail is kind of diminished in the minis to a certain extent but for this particular pattern that I bought um, I did see someone on in the Facebook group for Heaven and Earth Designs who had finished it and she posted some pictures of the mini and I thought it was just gorgeous. Um, like, I don't think the level of detail was too, like, corrupted or diminished uh, in this particular mini. So I went ahead and bought it. All right, so all that is just like a lead up to telling you what the pattern is. It is called Holiday Magic. Um, and the artist, oh gosh, now I forget. Well, I'll, I'll put the name of the artist in the, um, oh wait, L Lori Prindle. There it is. So Lori Prindle is the artist and is ch charted by Heaven Earth Designs. Um, and here is a picture of what the original artwork looks like. Um, cause this is how they present it on the website and in the PDF that you get. So <laughs> this pattern uh, combines two of my favorite things, which are unicorns and Christmas ornaments. <laughs> so you can see there's like Christmas ornaments in the unicorn's mane. And there's also like a Christmas border around the outside edge. It kind of looks like holly. So when I saw someone on Facebook had posted their finished cross stitch, of this, I was just like, wow. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna give full coverage a try, I think I'm gonna try it with this unicorn. So that is what I did. And <laughs> I made a special project bag for it. You can see there's unicorns inside the bag. <laughs> and then the back, of course, has Christmas ornaments. So it's the perfect bag and I also made it quite big because of so many flosses. And these are not organized yet. I just kind of like, I, I gathered them and just tossed them in. I'll worry about getting them on rings or whatever later. But yeah, I I was mostly able to kit this for my stash. I did have to buy maybe like eight skeins of some of the more obscure DMCs from uh, Michaels, but I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad. So I will show you what I have done on it so far. <laughs> so yes, I think I'm holding it in the correct orientation. This is just the border getting started here. Um, this doesn't look like much, but this is actually a lot of stitching. Um, I am able to use this in Pattern Keeper because all of Heaven and Earth, Earth designs are compatible with Pattern Keeper as far as I know. 
And according to Pattern Keeper, I have 1,040 stitches and I'm 1.35%. 1 percent <laughs> So, um, yeah, I am not, I mean, maybe I will never finish it. Who knows? Um, I hope I do because I think based on that finish that I saw on Facebook, it's just, you know, it will look amazing on the wall. Um, this is a new experience for me, doing a full coverage piece, doing a piece that is like confetti heavy like this. Um, and yeah, I was watching Chris Cross Stitch on Floss Tube. You know, this was maybe a month or so ago and he was talking about his full coverage that he's working on um because he I think he has one or maybe two full coverage and then the rest you know he does a lot of different things like ornaments and um just you know regular pieces too but he was talking about his full coverage and he explained it as you know you're just in a totally different mindset when you're working on something like this because it's not really about like the goal um because we're talking about like years put into something like this so it's more about the journey <laughs> and and the colors and just seeing it come together over the course of time so it's more about the experience in that sense and yeah it's almost like more like a puzzle or something and it might engage like a different part of the brain I don't really know I don't know the science behind it but I, I know that there's a lot of cross stitchers who exclusively do full coverage because that is what they enjoy um, and for me I don't know I don't know like where I will fall on that spectrum because I'm just like getting started but I have been enjoying it so far I am using 25 count easy grid um, even weave, which I got through uh, one, two, three stitch. You can see it's pre-gridded and the grids wash out, um, but it's also full coverage. So, you know, you don't really see the grids once everything's stitched. And I guess that's all I really have to say about this one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a surprise to me, but um, uh, I was also watching unfinished stitches. Again, maybe like I, I've seen most of their recent videos. Unfinished st stitches is Bonnie and Madison. Um, they're a, a mother and daughter team who do floss tube videos, and Bonnie, the mom, you know, she was talking about starting a long dog sampler and those are really really big complicated samplers and she her philosophy is just like you know I just want to try it and I just want to like stitch on it and this is my hobby and I get to pick what I do <laughs> and the name of their channel is unfinished stitches so that kind of gives you a sense of um I, I get the sense that it's more about the experience of just like having fun with it and they have a lot, a lot of projects, especially between the two of them, you know. <laughs> if you watch one of, one of, one of their videos, uh, you see like double the amount of stuff because they both have their own like rotation. But yeah, that really struck me just talking about how I just wanna try it. <laughs> and that's, that's what I decided to do. So I had to buy the pattern for six bucks and I had to buy the fabric and then some of the floss, but I had most of the floss. Uh, all right, so that was that one. That was like kind of a longer um, exposition on full coverage than I was expecting, but <laughs> hopefully you're not bored out of your mind. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, that was all of my whips and my new starts. So now I will move into plans. Um, now that the Santas are done, I'm really excited because I don't have to worry about them anymore. I can, it's like, you know, 
I can just do whatever I want. Um, so I have decided to jump in on the Deadly Aquarium Stitch Along by Lola Crow Stitcher or Lola Lola Crow Cross Stitch. I can I can link it in the description box. Um, so this will be my first ever stitch along. And this is a formal stitch along. Um, pieces of the full pattern are released uh, one by one. And the idea is, is that you stitch that part and you try to get it done, get it done in time for the next one and so on and so on. Um, so it's not an informal stitch along where you're just kind of like, oh, we're just gonna stitch this together. No, this is one where I, I personally would like to try to keep up with it. Um, it's also one where you do not see the full piece until you're done with it, really. Because um, you don't know what's coming uh, in, in the release, in the sections that are released. Um, so yeah, basically, this was by coincidence. <laughs> believe it or not. But I was making project bags. Sorry about that zipper. I was making project bags maybe like two weeks ago. I just, in the mood, I just made like three project bags. Well, I, I was making the one for my unicorn and then I just made a couple other ones for fun. <laughs> and this is fabric that I found from Joanne's fabric. Um, these incredible jellyfish and at that point, I wasn't really even, the Deadly Aquarium Sal wasn't even on my radar, but I just loved this print. I thought these jellyfish were so pretty. And yeah, they look, they look a little menacing. So then I started hearing about the Deadly Aquarium Sal, and I was like, wow, I have the perfect project bag for that Sal. Um, also, Lola Crow, has done, as far as I know, two other uh, stitch alongs the past couple of years. And the last, the one last year, I'm really sad I missed out on it because it was called The Greenhouse of Oddities. And if you haven't seen it, I mean, just look it up on Etsy or whatever. It, it is amazing. Um, it's exactly, you know, my style and I, I hope I will stitch it eventually but I missed the boat on that sal last year. So I was just like, you know, I am going to do the Deadly Aquarium because both of Lola Crow's other stitch alongs have both turned out amazing. Uh, I've seen pictures of them. They look just beautiful um, and spooky and I love them. And I was watching Cam the Stitcher and this was, I think her most recent video that just came out a few days ago she spoke about the Deadly Aquarium cell and Cam has done the Greenhouse of Oddities. And in her videos, her finished Greenhouse of Oddities is like sitting right behind her. And I like her, for her past few videos, I've just been like staring at that thing. <laughs> it's like, um, cause it's just amazing. Uh, so Cam was talking about the Deadly Aquarium um, and the kind of fabric she's gonna use and everything. But one thing she did point out, and I trust her because she's done the other two stitch alongs from this, the same designer. And she said that it's really, really important that you gotta get the frame done um, because a Lola Crow stitch along has a pretty elaborate border frame uh, for the piece. And you get about a month, a month and a half to do it. And Cam was like, like, if you're gonna do the cell, you have to keep up with the frame. You have to get that done. Otherwise you're gonna have a hard time like really keeping up with the rest of it. So I took that advice to heart and I am really committed to doing that frame um, within the time allotted. And then the rest of it, like all the animals and stuff that I imagine will be in the aquarium will be released over the course of the summer. So I am gonna really do my darndest to keep up with the stitch along. Um, and it might mean that I have to like, you know, put a lot of other projects on the back burner for now, but I right now 
there's nothing I'm like, like, oh, I must finish this. <laughs> you know, like I was with the Santas. Um, the last thing I'll say about the Deadly Aquarium was that fabric. Um, so on Saturday, when I decided I was gonna do the Deadly Aquarium, I had some free time and I wanted a break from the Santas of Fable and Fantasy. So I decided to try dyeing some like big pieces of linen from my stash. Both of these pieces of linen I found like, one was at a thrift store and these were actually for cross stitch. These were not like napkins or whatever. These were actual pieces of linen for cross stitch. One of them was in an old kit and it was just white. And then one was um, just an older piece of linen, you know, probably from the 90s or whatever. It was still in its packaging. No one had ever used it. And it was kind of this like drab, gray, blue, neutral. And I had <laughs> that particular piece I had picked up for 25 cents. I'm not even kidding. So I was like, I have nothing invested in this. I am going to like experiment with dyeing these two linens and just see if I can come up with something that will work for the Deadly Aquarium. Um, so here's one of them. So this is a 32 count. Um, and this is the one that I just showed in the photo that was kind of like a, a bluish gray um, and because of that, because the base fabric was already a little on the dark side, it, it came out a little bit dark. Um, it's not like crazy dark. And the first time I dyed it, I wasn't happy with it. Um, so I dyed it again. I was, I was at this most of, most of Saturday because I let it dry and I was like, eh, I don't I don't like the way that it turned out. I'm just gonna go ahead and like dye it again. And the second time I dyed it is when I added the royal blue writ dye. So that was in addition to the aquamarine and then a little bit of the neon green. And once I added the royal blue, I just thought it turned out really nice. So that's one of the ones I dyed. Um, this other one was, this is, I think this is a 28 count. This came out of an older kit that I had found and it was just white. Um, so I gave it a shot. So it's kind of hard to see in this light. It has some subtle modeling. I use the aquamarine writ dye and I use the neon green writ dye, just a little bit of it to get a little bit of green in there. You can see a little bit of the green. It's pretty subtle. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out as well. And for the Deadly Aquarium, I read the description, Lola Crow cross stitch, or yeah, Lola Crow cross stitch is um, recommending a lighter, a lighter fabric. So I think I'm probably gonna go with this one. Um, I also compared like the flosses and did like a floss toss and and there were some greens that were really close, really close to this. So that's another reason, even though this looks like really mysterious <laughs> and spookier. I just, I'm a little worried those greens would not show up. So right now I'm leaning towards this one, but I'm really happy with the way they both turned out. And it's just really fun to play around with fabric dyeing. Um, you know, if you happen to find just inexpensive fabrics uh, in your travels. But yeah, I have the flosses for the Deadly Aquarium, which are not organized yet. <laughs>
but the frame is being released on the 12th and I am looking forward to it. I'm really excited to start that project in between now and then. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping that maybe I'll be able to finish this. <laughs> that would be nice. I have like maybe two weeks, but. Okay, that, that was all I had to say about the Deli Aquarium. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and I don't really have haul, which I know is kind of weird for me, but I don't really have any haul this time. Um, I do have like the other fabulous houses. Well, these two. I did not get the greenhouse. The castle and the cottage. And then I got another one from Cottage Garden Samplings. These are all Cottage Garden Samplings. Winter's Wisdom. I just love, I love this. These birds are adorable. These are just like the birds that we get at our bird feeder. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't think this is like really the right time of year to be starting this one, even though I am tempted. And as far as the fabulous houses go, you know, these are the same series as this. And I, I was kind of wondering if I should put another one on this fabric because it would fit, but I don't think I'm going to, um, the cottage might work, like the colors might work for the cottage, but I don't necessarily think like they need to be sitting next to each other. Um, and I honestly don't know. I do like this castle a lot. Uh, I don't, I don't love the colors as much as I did with the Santa's house. So I don't think I'm like all gung-ho to start these right now. But I'm considering getting the Hobbit house, which I believe that one just came out. It's really, really cute. Uh, the Hobbit house. And then my last little piece of haul that I will show is um, my husband Andrew actually got this one for my birthday back in January, but I didn't really do anything with it yet. This is called Valentine's Day in the Wind. And it's so cute. <laughs> this reminds me of Andrew and me here. It's like, oh. And I did, I did actually kit it and there's not a ton of colors. And I started like the little flower up in the corner. Um, but as soon as I finished that little flower, I just, I realized I didn't like the fabric. So I'm gonna start it over on something else. I'm not even gonna bother to show that, but. And I, I can't really pronounce this. Quare, a batiquare, batiquare. This is the designer, if you want to look it up. They have so many cute patterns, a lot of different holiday ones, um, and just a, a wide variety, and they're all adorable. So this is in my uh, project bag with these like amazing Thomas Kincaid houses on them. There's like another one. So oh, cool. All right, I think that about does it for today. Um, we are having my family visit for the solar eclipse in a week. So we're busy getting ready for that. And we are definitely looking forward to that experience and just having some company. <laughs> we don't get a lot of visitors up here. <laughs> in the cold, cold north. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun. But thank you so much. If you stop by to watch any of my video today, I really appreciate it. And I guess all I have to say is happy stitching. Bye. <laughs>